Imagine for a moment that you are in 1970. You have just received your end of the month paycheck. It is Saturday morning and you're standing in a long queue at your local bank. You just want to cash your paycheck, transfer some money to your savings account and pay the bills. But so does everyone else, it seems. The line isn't moving. You still have to go shopping for groceries and make it to the newspaper stand before it closes. Now, flash forward to 2020. You're sitting in your kitchen, enjoying tea and eating toast. The phone lights up. Your salary payment has come in. So you immediately shop for your groceries online. They'll be delivered at home later today, free of charge. You read your paper, make some online payments. You take another bite of your toast. The world we live in changes fast. Financial technology or fintech is changing the way we interact with banks. In a not-so-distant future, fintech may fundamentally change how the financial system works. Naturally, this will have consequences for the work and role of central banks in the future. One of the most talked about innovations in this area is that of the so-called digital or cryptocurrencies. What is a digital currency? Digital means bits and bytes, so it's currency and electronic, rather than physical forms such as banknotes. Technology is rapidly changing the way we pay, but it's important to go back to the essence of money. Money is all about trust. Trust is hard to gain, but easy to lose. One misstep, you lose trust, your money's worthless. That's why central banks have spent significant effort to gain and maintain the public's trust in it. Over time, private forms of money have come and gone, but issuing currency is a core central bank function. The COVID-19 pandemic has increased interest in digital currencies as an alternative to physical money. Central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, are digital currencies issued by a central bank and backed by people's trust in it. Some central banks have been experimenting with CBDCs already, and the BIS, along with them, is thinking about the optimal design of CBDCs and how they could be interconnected in a global world. Central bank digital currencies combine innovative technology with the tried and trusted foundation of the central bank. But there is more to fintech than cryptocurrencies. New technology may radically change how our banking and payment systems work. Thanks to the internet, offering financial services like taking deposits, providing credit or managing bank accounts no longer requires a costly network of bank offices. Yet fintech can also hold new risks. All this capacity to target customers can be used for purposes which are not approved by customers like, for instance, uh, uh, for, for political purposes. And that would require close coordination between financial regulators and uh, privacy and data authorities to make sure that different objectives are well balanced. We've got to think about the kind of public goods that we have to provide as central bankers to make this new environment uh, work in, a, um, in an effective way and in a stable way. And that's why the BIS has created the uh, Innovation Hub, which will uh, develop a portfolio of projects that can uh, help central banks uh, build this new system in a way that is stable and efficient. It is about both understanding developments around us, understanding new technological solutions, understanding what the market is up to, but also about developing our own projects. So it is both a think tank and a laboratory. The Innovation Hub's mandate includes the monitoring and research of financial innovation. Centres are already operational in Hong Kong, Singapore, Switzerland, London and Stockholm. And more are to follow soon. The BIS Innovation Hub consists of a number of centres set up with local central banks across three continents. In short, the key is to take full advantage of all the benefits fintech has to offer in a fair and sustainable manner that benefits everybody.